Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a uh, when do these go out? My Thursday. Thursday. This is nine o'clock on a Thursday, and it's time for what's it called? Creativity, Craig's creativity. The something. creative process. The creative process. There you go. <laughs> this is the worst intro to a YouTube video in the entire fucking history of YouTube. Let's try again. Hey, my name's Craig. Welcome back to Magic TV. It's nine o'clock on a Thursday, and it's time for the creative process. There you go. Seamless. Nailed it, Michael. <laughs> Um, if you don't know what this is all about, this is insane. So basically, I have two bowls. In one bowl, I have effects that can happen in magic. Things like transpositions, teleportations, uh, stuff that you might do. In the other bowl, I have props that magicians use, as voted for by you guys in the comments below. Whenever you put a prop or a concept into the comments, Michael adds them into our bowls. So they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and more insane stuff goes in there. And yes, whoever left the message the other day, we have put a giant rubber dildo in there. Although, if that comes out, I don't know what we're going to be creating with that. But anyway, whatever you put in the comments down below, that's what goes in the bowls. And then the idea is, I take... One out of the one bowl, one out of the um, the effects bowl, I take two out of the props bowls, and then I have to create a trick in real time using those props uh, and, and creating that effect. That's basically what it is. Now, a couple of things, just so you know. I am allowed to do other stuff. I am allowed to use other stuff, right? So, like, uh, last week we had a banana and a pack of cards, and I introduced this Fengali deck for it in order to make that happen, okay? So it's not like I can't use other stuff, but I have to include the two things I pull out. That's very, very important. Um, and secondly, uh, this, is, this is legit. I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to do this. Last week, I think I pulled it off. I actually quite like my banana trick. I actually really <laughs> like the banana trick. The week before, we managed to do the nuts and bolts trick. I am fully aware that at some point, I'm going to fail miserably and die on my ass. But the whole point about these videos is to show the creative process. And here's the thing about creativity. Sometimes, it doesn't matter how hard you try, you're never going to be able to do what you set out to do. You know, for every... 10 good ideas I've had I probably have got rid of 500 terrible ideas uh, I also can't qu I can't guarantee the quality of the end effect if I am actually able to put something together will I ever use the mind reading card predicting banana from last week <laughs> I don't know it's in my wheelhouse maybe I'll do it maybe I won't I haven't done it yet but I'm sure there's going to be that special banana themed gig that I go to where I'm going to need it but it's not it doesn't happen everywhere you know I, I'm not saying this is something that's going to go into my number one set and immediately I'm going to be gigging it but the end result is that if I create something that I think is half decent, we'll show it to Jack and we'll get Jack's reaction. And, uh, and maybe we'll do a follow-up video to these and maybe I'll do a show using all of the stuff I've created in these videos. You know, we'll do a half an hour show. We'll, you know, get the, invite people, maybe like a little exclusive show or something. And it'll just be made up of the crap that we've put together in these videos. And we'll see what the audience thinks of it. I think that'd be quite good. So now you understand the concept. Two things. One, if you've got stuff that you want to add to the bowls, let us know in the comments down below. And Jack, will, Jack or Michael will dutifully write them in and put them into the bowls. And two... Try along with me. You know, I want to know what you would do in this scenario. I love it when I watch the video and people are commenting down below going, oh, I would have done this, I would have done that, I would do that. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. That's, that's The whole point of this is to inspire creativity. So let me know in the comments down below. You work through it with me. So here we go. Are we ready, Michael? Yes. The effect we are going for is... I should get a drum roll, but I don't care. Michael, I've hit the mother load. Week three, and finally, I've got a good one. It's A card. Any card at any number. <laughs> How did I know? A card at any number. <laughs> Boom. Yes. <sighs> okay. Any card at any number with Smarties. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any card at any number with Smarties and a double blank deck. If it was any card at any number with a double blank deck, I've already done that one. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Sorted. Quantum deck. Move on. Next. But we've got Smarties in the mix. Okay. Double blank deck and smarties 
any color, any number. Any ideas? Uh, any smarty at any number? <laughs> any smarty at any number. Look, we need props. That's what we need, first of all. So I'll tell you what, we're going to stop this video for a second. We're going to nip down the shops, go get some smarties, get ourselves a double blank deck of cards, and we'll come back and we'll figure out what we're doing. Okay, so I have nipped down into the warehouse and I've got ourselves a double blank deck of cards. Uh, we also have a bowl and we have a metric ton of smarties. Like we have loads of smarties, which is super fun. And we're just going to. That was an epic fail, wasn't it? <laughs> this is, must be. This must be what Mark Bennett went through when he bought out Get Smarter. Good grief! Creating tricks and smarties. Not, there we go. Hang on. Let me. I think I went overkill on buying the smarties. What do you reckon? I don't think we need this money. It's well, quite it's, a lot. It's quite sad how few smarties there are in a pack of smarties. Yeah. I seem to remember as a kid there were a lot more smarties than this. Anyway, okay, we don't need the other lot just yet. We'll put that there. So, right. We have Smarties. We have a double blank deck of cards. And we've got to do an ACAM. We've got to do an ACAM. The first thing that actually comes to mind... i put that aside for a minute. The first thing that comes to mind is we have like one smarty of one colour and like we need to buy a lot more smarties but one smarty of one colour and then like a load of yellows for example and you get yourself a little test tube so we'd go I mean I haven't got enough yellow for it to do this or maybe I have it, it, I mean if we're not dealing with playing cards and we're just dealing with smarties. I mean, the reason any card at any number, we have the name and number between 1 and 52, is because everyone knows there's 52 cards in the deck. But with smarties, you don't have to adhere to that 1 in 52 rule. So we could say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 16, 16, 17, 18... Okay, 17, 18, 19. So I've got 19 Smarties here. We could put more in. But, like, getting some sort of test tube. You know, the te you know like a, a really see-through test tube type yeah. thing? Getting, like, a test tube. I don't know the method to this, but imagine having a test tube and you've got... Um, you've got uh, all of the Smarties lined up. You've got, like, 20 Smarties. And the visual would be, you'd have this covered up, or you'd have this in a bag or something. Or This is your prediction, and you say, hey, I love Smarties, do me a favour, uh, you know, name a number between 1 and 20. Let's say we had 20 Smarties, we'll agree one in there. Um, let's say we had 20 Smarties, and we say, name a number from 1 to 20, and they name uh, 5. The visual would be, you'd turn it around, and the the red one would be in the fifth position from the bottom. That'd be quite good, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure how you'd do that, though. Well, me neither, but that's not the point. <laughs> um, but that that would be the visual. That would be a cool visual. How would you do that, Michael? Okay, so if the test tube... Okay, so a couple of different ways that you could do it, potentially... So the thing with the test tube is if you made it so that it was looking identical from one side to the other side and it was in a bag, you could bring it out either direction. So if, let me, let me show you what I mean. If you had, come over here and you'll see what I mean. Let's say this is your test tube, right? And your smarties are lined up in, uh, it wouldn't be a test tube but something like a see-through tube and your smarties are lined up in there and let's say that's 20 i know it's 19 but let's say it's 20. if the red smarty was there you could bring it out that way and show it's in the fifth position and you could bring it out here and show it would be in the 15th position yeah 
Does that make sense? Yeah. So you could bring it out and show it would be 15, or you could show it would be 10. Uh, so it would be, you could show it would be 15. So if you brought it out, you could bring it around either way. So you could bring it out that way and show that it's, it's in the fifth position, but you could bring it out the other way and show it's in the 15th position. We're making it too complicated. Let's just get 10 smarties for five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Let's put those over there for a minute. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. It's still impressive if you say there's 10 smarties here. Name a number from one to 10. And it's in a, but if it yeah. was 10 and it was here, so it was in the third position, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fourth position, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if it's in the fourth position, three, it's in the seventh position. Okay. So, so it's in the fourth position. Okay. Let's go back to our double blank cards. So, we have 10 cards. The one on the floor. <laughs> right, okay. So, we've got, 10 smart, uh, we've got 10 Smarties in a tube, and we've got these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are not needed for now. So, these would be in a tube, and you could wrap that up in a, in a, in a, maybe in a cloth or something, and you give it to somebody to hold. And say, I'll tell you right now, there's 10 Smarties in that tube. Nine of them are yellow. One of them is red. Your job is get to decide psychically which one, um, uh, what position it's in. Now I'm going to try and influence you. You're going to make a whole bunch of decisions, but I'm going to try and influence you. And what you do, we know that in this position it will be one or it will be seven. So the, sorry, it'll be four or seven, right? So the cards that are here, so the fourth and the seventh cards, we mark those on the back somehow. Or we crimp them, you know, to make it obvious. We, we work out a way to make it obvious where those cards are, you know what I mean? We, do, we figure something out. We crimp them, we mark them, we do whatever. So we say to them, look, I've got this tube here. There's 10 Smarties in there. There's nine yellow Smarties. There's one red Smartie. You hold on to that. I'm going to give you that right now. No ambiguity. So they get that. And you say, look, I'm going to try and influence you to be able to decide where that smarty is. You couldn't possibly know. And, and you could even say at this point, you could say, before you even bring these cards out, you could, you could introduce the, uh, the concept of the thing. Like, hey, 10 smarties, um, one red, and the rest are yellow. You, you're going to try and decide what position the smart is in. Do me a favour, if you were going to name a position now at random, what position would you name? If they say four or seven, you've got a fucking miracle. <laughs> You're done. If they say four or seven, you go, okay, interesting. But you phrase that question in such a way that if they say anything else other than four and seven, you go, okay. You see, you don't want to go with your instinct. I'm going to try and influence you to get the best answer. Uh, the best answer, and I'm going to do that using these. I've got cards, and all of these cards have got different numbers on. The numbers are from 1 to 10. Can you mix those up for me? So you mix them up, and what you do is you then take it, and you say, look, we'll, divert, we'll deal them into two piles. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to deal them into two piles, but I can see where those... Um, I can see where those breathing crimped cards are. So I know four and seven got dealt into this pile. There's four, there's seven. So now I can use some simple equivoke. So I can say, right, okay, we're going to go, you know, you're going to make all the decisions. I'm trying to influence. First of all, we need to eliminate one of the piles, keep one of the piles, push one towards me. And if they push this one, you go, fantastic. So we've eliminated all of these from the packet that you've shuffled. You've been left with these. Shuffle them up again. So they mix them up a little bit more. And you go brilliant. Let's just uh, let's just deal them on the table. And now we're in a great situation because we're going to use Equivoke, but we have two that they can pick. So you're going to go. I tell you what. Put your fingers down on two of them. And let's say they go there. Uh, you go fantastic. We'll eliminate those as well. And that leaves us with uh, with this. Do me a favour. What I want you to do is pick two up. And if they pick these two up, you say great. Hold on to those. And you say we'll eliminate that one. And now you're left with four and seven. 
So they can, uh, you can say, right, last one, whichever one you put down on that pile over there, you're going to eliminate it, you're going to keep the other one. So they put seven down, you go, what have you been left with? Four. Or if you're in this situation and it was like pick two up and to pick these up, you go, great, eliminate them then. So they put them away and you go, well, that leaves that one. What does that leave? Oh, well, I got the wrong one there. What does, that, <laughs> what does that leave? That leaves seven. Amazing. Okay. And you take it out. I mean, that would work. Yeah. That uses double blank cards. That uses, we need to get some sort of see-through tube to put those in place. But the fact that you've got these 10 Smarties and the red one is in, in, in 1%. I like that in terms of you're giving, there's a lot of things to like about that. You're giving them the tube at the beginning. So it's not like it's going to be some sort of multiple out type thing because you'll get, even though it is, but it doesn't feel like it's multiple out thing because you're giving them the tube from the beginning. I also like the fact that you've got that potential hit. And a lot of the time, if you ask someone to name a number uh, uh, from one to 10, psychologically, a lot of people go for seven. Don't know if you know that. It's, it's just a thing. Uh, a lot of people go for seven. If you just say, look, you know, I just want you to name a number quickly, name a number. A lot of people go for seven. Um, so you've got that instant hit, that which even if seven wasn't a psychologically advantageous number, which it is, but put that aside, even if it's not, you've got 10 numbers and you're covered with two of them. So in other words, you've got a 20% chance of getting an instant hit immediately without even bringing the cards out, in which case, that's a, that would fool me. Here's a test tube, name a number, four, pass it me and you just take the cloth off and you, you have it the right way and there's that in the fourth position. That would blow my mind. That would blow my mind. I would have no clue how that's done. But if they name anything else, you say, see, blah, 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 blah. So you have a reason to bring out these numbers now. And the reason is very, very simply because you're going to try and influence them apparently or you want to make it completely random or whatever it may be. And I just love the fact that they shuffle the cards. And because of that breather crimp, I can just immediately see where those cards are. So I can immediately just deal them into the correct piles and boom, you're into it. And it makes the equivocal. Or because we've got two, the other thing that we could do is we could do a very clean patio force. So the pick any two, eliminate one. You've seen the patio force before. Yeah. You could do the patio force, but you know the last decision, because you've got two, you would end up with the final two cards, which would be the four and the seven. And you go, look, you make the final decision, pick one to eliminate, and whichever one you're left with, that's the one we're going to use. And it sells the patio force even stronger because... Um, um, because... because um, it sells the patio force even stronger because they're making the final decision. So that's quite good. It also uses the double blank cards, which is a good thing because I can't figure out how to use the double blank cards with this. So it has a reason for the double blank cards. Um, and the Pringles, sorry, not Pringles, the, the Smarties can be examined in this state. So you could give the, open up the tube and give it to them if you wanted to and let them eat the pink, yeah, let them eat the, <laughs> because originally what was going through my head, I'll tell you what was going through my head, when I was trying to come up with this, is making a smarty that's like double sided. So, like making a double sided sharpie. Uh, make it, why do I keep saying sharpie? Making a double sided smarty so that on one side it's. So, all of them are yellow, but they're all red on the other side. And so now you don't have to even use the bank cards, which unfortunately we have to because it's, not, it's part of the thing. But if you had them double sided, well, how would you spin it round in the thing, though? That's the problem. Oh, so you don't make all of them double-sided. You only make the ones in the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth position double-sided. Right, so you make the ones in, in, in those positions double-sided. And it starts off so they're all facing that... Give me another yellow. It starts off so they're all facing that way. So it starts off like that. And you bring out the tube... And you go, uh, and it's covered up again with a cloth or something, and you've got a magnetic PK ring on. So you've got, a ma you have to have magnets in the in the in the <laughs> shop. No, sorry, I'm, I keep thinking about this. Right. So what we'd have to do, this is quite labour intensive. We're going to we're going to cut a smarty <laughs> in half, and we're going to put a small near dominion magnet in the sharpie. In fuck me, in this smarty. So inside the smarty, we're going to put a small near dominion magnet in all five of them, and then we're going to make them double sided. So we've got in the in the two four six eight ten position we've got um, magnetic double sided 
um, Smarties. So then you hold the tube like this and you've got your PK ring on or, or your, you know, some sort of magnet under a plaster or something. You've got something like that. And you say, name a number. Now, if they name 246810, you're golden. All you'd have to do is say, are you sure you want that number? And you bring your ring. Because there's a normal Smarty in between each one of the gimmick sharp is, uh, Smarties, you'd very easily, and you know where they are inside the tube, you'd very easily be able to bring your hand up as you take it into this one. And I reckon you could flip that Smarty around with a, with a PK ring. So you go, okay, so what number do you want? Four. Boom. Okay, are you sure you want four? Yeah, you want four. If it was any other number, if it was an odd number, you'd do the same thing. So let's say they said three. You'd do the same thing, but you'd go for the one second from the bottom, which would be uh, the eighth position, and you'd just run the PK ring over it. That would flip your magnetic double-sided uh, Smarty around. And then you turn the tube around and you say, you sure you want that? Is that okay? And then you pull it off and you show that there's one. But that's a bit... That's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> Just a bit. I'm putting magnets inside Smarties and <laughs> making them double-sided, all to do the same trick they were able to do with none of that crap a few minutes ago. So it's, it's like basically the exact same effect. The only advantage is you've eliminated these, but we need to use these anyway because it's part of the challenge because it says double blank cards. But it'd be an interesting thing. Do you reckon you could magnetize a Smartie? Probably. There's no reason you can get some pretty small magnets, so... Cut them in half and just super yeah. do a, a, a thing in there. And just spin it around with a magnet, that would work. Okay, so what we've got so far... ...is we've got this, which I, I, I actually... What do you think of that? I think that's quite good, yeah. It's, it's not of the level of the banana trick from last time. Not of the time. banana trick, no. <laughs> not of the banana level. Hang on. I missed my face. I was in Okay. Fortunately, that one didn't have a magnet in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? Um, okay. Okay, so. If we weren't going to use that concept of any coloured Sharpie at any number. Sharpie! It, smarty. It's been a long day already. If we weren't going to use that, that concept of having any Smarty, any coloured Smarty at any number... How else could we do an ACAN with Smarties and a double blank deck? Okay. So, you've got a double blank deck of cards. We need to stop thinking about playing cards because this is not going to be playing cards at all. It needs to be something else. Can't be playing cards. Could it be candid? What about if there were? What about if the? What about if the deck of cards had different candy written on it? So one of them is Smarties, but then you've got Twix, Mars Bar, you've got all these different things. That's still technically in any card at any number. Yeah. You've got all these different candies. It's yeah. technically any candy at any number. Um, so if you had a deck of 52 cards... Oh, <laughs> Whoops. There we go. This is that old Wayne Dobson trick. That's what that is. We don't need that. So if we had 52... If we had a deck of 52 cards... And they're blank on both sides, but each one has a different candy on it. And we had them name a number. And when they name the number, the smarties appear at that number. That's technically yeah. in any yeah, that would be in that that any any card at any number. But why are we using the smarties? We we have to incorporate the smarties. We can't just have smarties written on a card. But that uses the blank deck, doesn't it? Because if you have yeah. different, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's stop the video for a minute. And what we'll do... <gasps> I've got an idea. I've got a really, really good idea. I've got a really good idea of how we can actually put all of this together. I, d I still don't know how to use those. That's not an idea. But I've got a really good idea other than that. This will work. We're going to come back. We're just going to get a double, another double length deck of cards. We'll get, get, get a can of roughing spray. 
and we're going to spend a few minutes marking up playing cards and we'll be back in literally a second. Just to give you an update, and by the way, people say, oh, Craig's so busy. How does he get time to do everything? I'm not too sure, especially when I've just spent the last half an hour <laughs> writing candies on the back of double blank cards. But that's what I've done. I also um, roughed a deck of cards as well. So I took the blank deck, roughed them. I'm eating um, smarties. There's not going to be many left. I, um, I roughed the double blank deck so that there's now... Well, let me show you. Um, I have created basically a mirage deck for candies. So we can spread it like this and show all different candies. We, we had to search on the internet to find all the different candies, by the way, because we didn't know them all. Me and Michael ran out after four. <laughs> so we went through. We found some right weird ones. Do you guys know there's actually a candy in the UK called Viagroids? I'm not joking. I don't think it's around anymore, is it, Michael? I don't think so. Don't I've not think... seen it in shops. I'd love to know what that does to you when you eat it. But apparently there's, there's, there's candy called Vagroid. But anyway, by the way. So I've created this. And what I've done, just to keep you abreast of the situation, I have roughed pairs of cards. So I've roughed double blank cards into pairs. So every other card is Smarties. Now... This solves half of the problem because this is actually a really cool A can. It doesn't solve the problem that we've got all these candy and we don't know what to do with them, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's solve half of the problem first of all. Interestingly, this is the exact opposite approach of what we decided to do before. Because at the beginning, it was like, I don't know what to do with these blank cards, but here's an idea. Let's take the candy and put it in a test tube. Now we're approaching it in a different direction. Now it's like, I don't actually know how to incorporate, incorporate the candy, but this is a killer A can. So... The idea with this is that you would show that you've got all different candy. Um, you could have the spectator cut the cards or do whatever they want to do if you wanted to be that way inclined. But you can have them all mixed up. You know, you can do this sort of stuff. And when you want to go into it, um, you literally are going to have them name a number. You say there's 52 different candies. Name a number, Michael. Uh, 12. 12. So you're just going to... You know that every odd position is a candy so if you go 12 you're going to go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so you're going to deal 12 if they say an even number you're going to deal 12 cards onto the table and you're going to show this card and it's going to be smartest so you're going to act like you dealt that many cards down and the next one is smartest and the nice thing is, because they're pairs, even though I've separated the pairs as I dealt them down, if I just take that smarty off the bottom and put it on top, and put those on top, that's reset. So what I'm doing here, and if it's an odd number, you would go directly to the odd number. So let's say they said seven, you're just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you're going to get smarties. And again, if you just take that one and put it on top, that's going to reset and I didn't put that back where it was meant to be because I'm an idiot. So that would go back there. There. Perfect. So, and all I'm doing is I'm just separating the doubles. So because these cards are roughed into pairs, I can show all of the different candy. Oh, but obviously I'd have to get them to... Well, that's not going to work. Because obviously they're naming the number, but it's like it's Skittles. Whoa, yeah, brilliant. What's this? <coughs> Unless we got them to, unless we made a prediction, so you could like, run, we've got this spare double blank card over here. Where's my, I don't know where my Sharpie's gone. Have you seen my Sharpie? Um. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Michael. There we go. <laughs> That's got nine on it. We don't want that one. Oh, God, I'm wasting so many cards here. Right, okay. So, you could have a prediction here. Put on a question mark, because that is the universal wanky magician sign for prediction and you could write on there smarties and so you could say this is my prediction this is my prediction i'm going to put it down here um i've got all these different candies here and you could show that all of them are different uh have them mixed up if you want to you could even kind of go down this little shuffling thing here do whatever you want to do have them name a number, name a number, Michael. 52 different candies. 11. 11, so you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
11, we'll put 11 there. 12 would have been wine gums. Do you like wine gums, Michael? No. No. Nobody likes wine gums. Uh, 10 would have been aero. Do you like aero, Michael? Yeah. Yeah. But you went for this one. You went for number 11. Smartest. That was a free choice, wasn't it, Michael? You could have said any number. You said smartest. But you ended up with smartest. And my prediction was smartest. Which is good, but there's two problems. Now, the first problem is... That's not technically an any card at any number. I know that we can't do an any card at any number because we haven't got cards, but technically it should be an any candy at any number, which is also a can. And what we have here is we have any number, we don't have any candy. It's not like I'm freely getting them to name the candy first, am I? I'm getting them to, um, I'm putting down a prediction and I'm having them name the number and the card, the, the candy at that number is the candy that I've predicted, but they're not naming the candy. They're... They're, they're, they're just naming the number. So that's not really, that's more of a, a can. That's more of a candy at any number. Yeah. Not any candy at any, that's no good, right? We'll get rid of that. Um, and also the other problem is. You need to use your bowl of smarties. <laughs> we need to incorporate the smarties. And we need it to be in any candy at any number. We need to include the smarties. And we need to have it in any candy at any number. Okay, well, 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 the way that you get them to have an any candy at any number is that you show all the, you show all of the, um, you show all the candies a difference. And then you just get them to touch one. When they touch one, because it's technically a mirage deck, you can show candy. You can then cut that into the pack and, and have it mixed up and shuffled so they have no idea where it is. And then you can have them name the number, let's say they say six, and you can go one, two, three, four, five, six. If you'd, uh, if you'd been here, it would have been more teasers. If you'd been here, it would have been after eight, but you got this one. What was the candy you looked at earlier? Smarties? And look, I've got Smarties. That's, that's, yeah, that works. That works, that's great, that's fine. Because that way they feel like we're actually using the, the mirrored deck concept for two things then. We're using it to force the candy in a very, very fair way. And the reason to do that, you can't just have them name any candy because it might not be in here. So you, that's your reason for getting them to touch one because you know that then it's definitely in there. So they touch it, they look at it, and then it's lost into the pack, but then they can name any number. That's much better. That covers the blank cards. How do we incorporate that? Any ideas, Michael? No. The only thing I can think of is like a prediction revelation at the end. Prediction. Of somehow showing that you knew they would pick Smarties. Prediction. Prediction revelation. That's a great idea, but not at the end, at the beginning. Right, okay. Bang! Bang! Right. It's even got a question mark. It's my banana bag from last week. It's still here. Um, that's how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I just picture a poor magician right now sitting in their living room watching magic TV and their partner walks in just as they're watching me counting Smarties into a bowl and they're just going to look at that poor person and go, what the fuck are you doing? Now you're watching a guy count Smarties into a bowl. What the fuck? Sorry. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I'm to the 15. Uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 24, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, 52. Your idea of a prediction is actually brilliant. So, the 
handy goes into the bag. There. This can be. I'm sacrificing the bowl of things for a minute. We need more than one bowl, so we can put them back in in a bit. Right, okay. They go there. Out of the way. Right, so. This goes here. So, how's this for an idea? You do the prediction at the beginning. So, you say, I've got a bowl, and in the bowl there's a bag, and in the bag there's some candy. I've also written down 52 different types of candy on these cards. Each card has got a different type of candy on it. And in a second, I'm going to get you to pick one. And the reason I'm going to get you to pick one is, if you name one at random, it might not be here. And I need that candy to be in this deck. Let me explain why in a minute. So now you have them touch one. And they touch it. And you show it smart is. You then have it put back into the pack. And you can have it shuffled. And you say, now you could have thought of any candy. What did you think of? And they say smart is. And then you open up and you say, you're not going to believe this, but in this bag, I actually had Smarties. So it's your prediction idea, but at the, the beginning. Yeah. But get this. This is why we use the Smarties. You then say to them, there's actually 52 Smarties here. Now that was amazing. But I predicted the, the fact that you would pick Smarties. And I want to see if you can do a prediction as well. So we know that somewhere in this deck, there's a card with Smarties on it. We don't know where. There's 52 cards in the deck. There's 52 pieces of candy. I want you to reach in and take some candy out. It's up to you how much you take. So they reach in and then you tell them to count it. So they count it and they go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, and you say, so you grab some candy and you grab 16 pieces of candy. Was that a fluke? I asked you to predict where that candy card is. Watch, 16, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That card right there, if you'd had 17, it would have been Aero, nice candy, not the one you went for. 15 would have been, Fudge, nice candy, not the one you went for, but you went for 16. That's how many Smarties you pulled out the bowl yourself. And in the 16th position, Smarties. That's fucking that's good. good. <laughs> that's good, isn't it? Oh, I like that. That's great. Oh, that, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'd do that. That's it, mate. I really like that. What do you think of that, Michael? I really like that. Because it gives a reason for the candy. <laughs> because that was the main problem with this, wasn't it? You can technically do the whole thing with this. Yeah. You don't need the candy, but you need to have the candy included. But doing this, then they're picking that number. You, you're doing it to get that number named. But using your idea of the prediction, but at the beginning, you're using this to, it, A, gives them a free choice of any candy, but B, gives you a logical reason to bring the candy into play because it's part of the prediction, which then immediately flows into the second part. And presentationally, you it's not really in any card at any number. Any card in any number is normally presented as, hey, you're going to name any, you know, it's more of a coincidence thing. But this is, I've made a prediction of the candy and I'm correct. Let's see if you can make a prediction of where it is in the deck. So it's them that's doing it. Yeah, I really like that. Should we bring Jack in? Let's do it. I think we should bring Jack in. Jack's going to see this for the first time. Are you excited, Jack? Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> so, i got a couple of things here. I've got a deck of cards. And your pack lunch. And my pack lunch. Uh, that's actually a prediction, hence the question mark on it. And I've got a bowl. Now, we'll get to that in a minute. But first of all, this is not a normal deck of cards. This is, is it a, not? No, it's a blank deck. Um, so, these cards are blank. On the one side, they're blank completely. But on the other side, there's 52 different pieces of candy. Some of the most amazing candy and sweets that I've ever eaten. We've got After Eights, Twirls. I'm sure you've eaten some of these. I know you're a 
go to the gym every day and you don't allow any sort of stuff like this in your body right now, but I treat myself I'm sure sometimes. you treat yourself sometimes. I'm sure you, any particular candy you like the best? Smarties. Really? Smarties are my favorite. Really? Smarties are your favorite? That's very interesting to know. Um, Smarties are in here somewhere. I don't know where, but Smarties are in here. Uh, and what we're going to do here, my friend, is we're going to try and have you pick a random piece of candy. Right. Okay. But when you look at it, don't tell me. You can sh actually, don't even tell the gang at home. Keep it to yourself. Okay. okay. So just, just touch anyone. Are you sure you want that one? Yeah. Because you can change your mind if you want to. You, sh you sure you want this one? This is your choice? I'll have it. Okay. Have a look at it. Don't show me. Don't show the gang. Uh, but remember it. Have you got it? Yep. Great. And then uh, just pop it back and we'll uh, we'll leave it in there. And we'll uh, we'll mix it up so that nobody knows where that card is, okay? Yep. Now, I'm going to snap my fingers like this. And when I do snap my fingers, what I would like you to do is name any, uh, name, the ca name the candy that you just saw. Is that okay? Yep. Believe it or not, it was Smarties. <gasps> What a coincidence. He loves Smarties so much oh. that you actually gravitate it. It could have been after eights. It could have been twelves. It could have been anything, but it's Smarties. <gasps> what if I told you I knew that you'd touch Smarties? What if I told you I knew that your favourite candy would be Smarties? Probably wouldn't believe me, right? But this little bag's been here the whole time. And inside this bag, there is candy. Is it? Not just any candy. Smarties! I got Smarties. How cool is that? That is really cool. Isn't that amazing? But you know what? That's me. I made that prediction. I was the person who was able to predict exactly what candy you would pick. What if I told you that you would be able to do a similar sort of thing? What if I told you that you would be able to predict exactly where the smartest card is in this pack of cards? Because we know there's only one smartest card. We have no idea where it is because they were shuffled, right? But we know it's yeah. in there somewhere. And you love Smarties. And you, you picked Smarties. So if I told you you could actually do that, would you believe me? I don't know. If I just got you to name a number, you probably wouldn't be able to do it. But subconsciously, you would. Which is why this isn't just any old Smarties. These Smarties actually have, well, there's 52 Smarties altogether in there, which is the amount of cards in this pack. So what I want you to do is reach in, when I say go, you're gonna reach in and you need to grab some Smarties. You can grab a handful, you can grab a lot, you can grab a few, you can grab a couple. It's up to you, but you wanna grab some Smarties. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Go, grab some Smarties. Are you happy? Yep. Okay, so what I want you to do now is count how many Smarties you've got there. Okay. Okay, so count them. You can either uh, count them onto the table, count them back into the bowl, count them whatever, I don't really count. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen. And did you, like, did, you, did was that just a random grab or did you think, right, I'm going to go for fourteen? It was a random. It was a random grab. I was tempted to eat them. But <laughs> <laughs> and we know that somewhere in here, there's a smarty card, right? Yeah. I'm going to deal fourteen cards and then we'll look at the card that, that that's there, okay? So look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now, if you'd have gone one more, you would have dealt fifteen, then you would have ended up on this, which is mini eggs. Do you like mini eggs? I love mini eggs. But it's not smart eggs. Mm, if you wanted the one before, it would have been Galaxy. Oh, I love Galaxies. But it's not Smarties. You ended up on this one right there, right? Yeah. You could have you could have grabbed a whole bunch of them and ended up with Maltesers or Starburst or Polo Mints or Wine Guns or Kit Kat or Jelly Bait. You could have gone for any of them, but you went for that one right there. You pulled out 14 Smarties. Was it 14? You pulled out 14 yeah. Smarties. And you ended up on <gasps> Smarties. the Smarty card, man. Dude, looks like you're magic. Looks like you can do this stuff as well. No, 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 no. Oh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> the documentary coming soon, right here on no, Magic it's not. TV. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, that's, um, that's incredible. Not only did we predict exactly what candy you would go for, but you even were able to work out what position it was in the deck. What do you reckon? 
I reckon I'll go to the sweet shop now. Yeah, I don't think so, right? <laughs> so Jack liked it, which is really good. Now, I find it really interesting that he picked Smartis. I found that really, really interesting. And I was considering when I was performing to him, skipping the whole touch a card thing and just saying Smartis, okay, and showing the prediction is Smartis, which I could have done. But I chose not to do that because I wanted to see it play out like we'd actually designed it in the creative process and not kind of cheat because he named Smarties. But I reckon if you said to somebody, especially here in the UK, name your favourite candy and, you know, Smarties is a very popular candy over here in the UK, isn't it, Michael? Yeah. So I think a lot of people would say that. Um, but uh, So you've got a small chance of getting a, a direct hit. But even if you haven't, you know, it's it's still really strong. I very much like that. Can you pass me the ball very quickly, Michael? Because I just want to wrap this up by giving you a couple of other ideas that you could do. Um, the, I mean, we settled on that one, and that's absolutely fine. But if you got yourself a Sharpie marker, another way of doing this, I was thinking about it when I was performing to Jack, another way of doing it would be to write numbers on uh, one side of the Smarties. So you get 52 Smarties, but you'd have to have the same Smartie. Same colour Smarties, so you'd have to buy a lot of Smarties. And write numbers on each one, like that's an 8. Can you see that's an 8 there, Michael? Yeah. And this would be um, an 11, and so on and so forth. And this one would be a... I'll do it with 6, so you, so you can see. So this would be a 3... There you go. Oh, I need one more yellow. Uh, can you... Do we have a bowl somewhere? We did have a bowl of Smarties, didn't we? Hang on, let me go and get one. Hold that thought. I'm back. <laughs> da, da, da. Did you miss me? Okay, so, and then what you do, you'd have to have 52. <laughs> you'd have to have 52 Smarties with different numbers on them. And this is the old double-sided coin gag. So let's say you want to four, six, uh, 17. You'd have one Smarty with 17. <sighs> but it would be 17 on both sides. They don't know about that. So what you'd have, I know we haven't got, if you wanted to do this, you'd have a bunch of Smarties and you'd say, look, I've got a whole bunch of Smarties here. Um, and what you'd do is you'd have your deck, but you'd, you'd create a normal double blank deck of cards. And what you do, and I'm not going to go through this now, I'm not going to go and buy more Smarties to get 52 yellow Smarties, but let me give you the idea, because this is another valid way of doing it. Get yourself a double blank deck of cards, and what you'd do is you'd write different candy on each one, legitimately, but you'd put the Smarty one into... Um, you'd, you'd cut it short and you'd put it into the fourth position. So the fourth position here is 17. So you'd cut it short and you'd put it into the 17th position. So then you can show the smarties, uh, sorry, you can show that this would be a prediction again. So this would be in the bag and this would be a prediction. You'd have the, you'd show the deck and you'd show there's all different smarties in there. And uh, sorry, all different candy in there. And you'd riffle at the back and get a break 17 cards down and do a riffle force and show them the candy. So obviously it's gonna be smarties. Put the cards back, give them a full shuffle if you want to, put them down on the table, and then you'd show your prediction is indeed Smarties. And you'd say, the interesting thing is, each one of these Smarties have different numbers on them from 1 to 52. And the cool thing is, you could actually show that all these Smarties do have different numbers from 1, from 1 to 52. And so now you'd get them to pick them up and shake them. They could actually be different colours. It doesn't matter if they're all the same colour, actually, thinking about it. Uh, it wouldn't make any difference. Sorry, they don't all have to be the same colour. I could do it. Maybe we'll do this. Maybe we'll do this. If you see another performance of this, and I show Jack another trick, it's because I've been bothered to do it, but I, I can't guarantee that I will do. Um, but you, you, you do this, and then what you're doing is you're just going to eliminate all of the face down front. You say, okay, we've got rid of all of these numbers. Pick them up again and give them a shake. Okay, we've got rid of that one here. And we've got rid of this one here. Okay, pick them up and give them a shake. Okay, they're both face up. Can we give them a shake? Pick them up, give them a shake, for bloody sake. But there you go. Oh, no. Okay, there you go. And eventually, you're going to get that one gone. And you go, okay, you're left with 17. So it's a very cool, but because this is double-sided, it's never going to go face down. So it's the only one <coughs> that's going to end up with a number. So you can legitimately show that every single Smarty has a different number on it. You end up with 17, and then you can take the deck, 
and you can have them deal to the 17th position themselves because it's not a gimmick deck, it's a normal deck. They can deal to the 17th card themselves and that card will be Smarties. So it's a way of actually doing the same thing. What do you prefer, Michael? I quite like that. That is quite a cool idea. Yeah, what do you prefer? Do you prefer using a gimmick? Uh, the advantage of that is everything's examinable. Yeah. This deck is not examinable because obviously it's a rough deck. What, uh, and also when you're dealing, you can't show them face up because obviously every other card is smartest. Whilst with this, it's a regular deck in that they can examine it. Yes, there's a short card in there, but they're never going to see the short card. And these are all examinable. Yes, Number 17 is not because it's double-faced, <laughs> but you could, for example, just go 17 and eat it. Um, you know what I mean? And, or you could have, you know that 17 is going to be the end one, so you could have another Smarty with 17 written just on one side. So they're doing the whole of the, uh, the shaking thing there shaking and you go 17 that's the one that you ended up with and you just throw that there and you've switched it for that 17 at the end yeah so now everything is completely examinable this is just ditched into your pocket or whatever uh seven it, it's completely examinable and then they they deal down to the card and the card's there i mean it's a bit weird that you've got smarties with numbers on them but <laughs> it's no weirder than doing a trick with fucking smarties in the first place i mean yeah. you're, you're predicting smarties at least it's kind of intriguing and interesting which one do you prefer Probably the second one by the sounds of it. Can I be bothered to actually make that up? Because <laughs> you're going to have to make the, the whole deck of cards. Oh, God. Oh. I really want to know. I want to see what it's like. Maybe we could get Katie in and do it on Katie. Do we even have another double blank deck? Yeah, I do. Fuck it, we'll do it. Uh, okay, here we go. So, Katie, I've got a couple of things here for you. Uh, first of all, I have a bag with a question mark on it. That is the universal sign of prediction. Uh, I also have a bowl. That'll become important later on. But I have a deck of playing cards as well. Yep. And these are not real cards. These are blank cards. They're blank. They're blank uh, on the back. Mm -hmm. On the front, it's very interesting because what we have on the front is I, me and Michael went through and we basically just wrote down every single candy we could think All of. All the sweets. All the candy. Now, there's some that are American candy, like Reese's Pieces, because I like that. But there's also UK candy, Cadbury Bars, Galaxy, Fudge, Curly Whirly. They're all, the point is, they're all completely and totally different candies. Yep. We went through and we made sure that we're completely different. Now, I want you to pick a candy and it's going to be completely at random. Okay. So as I go down through the cards like this, you're going to say stop any time you want to. Stop. Are you sure you want to stop there? Yeah. Okay, can you have a look at that candy? You got it? You can show the camera if you want to, just don't show me. Got it? You got it? And then pop it back. And put it back in there. And we'll, we'll mix them up. I don't want you to know where it is, but if I kind of do this and, and give them one of uh, these. There we go. Would you agree that they're completely yes. mixed up, right? Are you happy with that? Yep. Good stuff. Um, so, you picked a candy, and you could have picked any candy at all, but you picked one candy and one candy in particular. This bag's been here from the very beginning. For the first time, what was the candy that you picked? Smarties. Do you like Smarties? They're all right. They're all right? Not your favourite? No. What's your favourite? Galaxy Ripple. Don't love the Galaxy Ripple. But here's the thing. Listen. That could be M&M's. It could be M&M's. It could, could be... could be uh could be mul uh, minstrels. Ooh. But... It's Smarties. It's Smarties. See? There you go. <laughs> but these are not normal Smarties. Do you see what I've done there? They've all got numbers on. Yes. Now, some people say, how does Craig get as much done in a day that he does? Um, they don't even factor into consideration that I've sat here writing on playing cards for the last half an hour and writing on Smarties. And now we can't eat them. And now you can't eat them. Um, but, well, but it's worth it for the trick. <laughs> so what we have here is we have all, we have 52 Smarties, yep. we have 52 playing cards. Mm -hmm. And what I did is on every single Smarty, I wrote a different number. Yep. There's 52 numbers, as you can see, hopefully you can see. Yep. 52 numbers, each one of these numbers is different. You can turn yeah, them all over if you want to. Yeah. And, so. and what I did there is I was able to predict the candy that you picked, because you had a free choice, you went for uh, Smarties. Mm -hmm. And I was able to predict that you'd go for Smarties. But what about if 
if I told you that you could do it? Because we know from the Katie test, you're amazing at magic. You don't even realise you're amazing at magic. So you're going to make me do it again? Well, I'm going to see if, you, you're gonna see if it works, you know? Uh, we're going to eliminate down to one number. Because okay. if I had you name a number, you might go for one that's psychologically appealing. So we're going to have you, in a really random way, go down to one number. The random way is all of these have got different numbers on them. Mm -hmm. You're going to pick them up and you're going to shake them up and drop them on the table. We're going to eliminate all the face down ones. And we're going to keep going until there's only one left. Okay. Okay, so pick them all up. Scoop them all up. That's Scoop amazing. them all up. All these goodies. Oh, All sweet. the goodies. That's great. Yep. And then give them a good shake. And then just drop them on the table. And we'll get rid of all the face down ones. So if there's a face down one, stick it back in the bowl. Uh, those four are all face down. These purples. Uh, perfect, yeah. These were face down. Uh, oh. There's a couple of green there that were face down. Is that one face down? Yeah, that was face down. This, this one's here is face down. Should we take those as well? Yeah. That one there, that green one. That's, That's on its side. So I will we'll turn it face off. Uh, there's that a purple one's upside down. and that purple one's upside down. Perfect. Right, pick them up and we'll do it again. Okay, okay. It's very exciting. Oh, there you go. It's a good job it's not too hot in it. They'd be melting. All I know, right? right? Okay, let's get rid of the face down one. So that's that one, that one, that one. Them two. These whole bunch here. Those three? Yeah. And that one. Oh. What about that one? Half mm -hmm. It's up to you. I'll let you choose. We'll keep it. Okay, that red one? Upside down. Let's go. Right, so we've got a few more. Keep going. All this right. is a random way to pick a number, would you agree? And I've noticed you've knocked the cards off. But Sorry. Well, it's okay. It's <laughs> I got so excited when I saw the sweets. <laughs> oh, we got quite. Oh, that's face down. Face down, face down, face down, face down, face down, face down, face down. I'll let you choose on that one. Face down. Get rid of it. So we've still got a few. Uh, let's do it again. Pick them up. All right. Better hope they don't all go face down. <laughs> Oh. oh wow, we only left with one there. That's perfect. So, what are we oh, left yeah. with? That's the number seventeen. Would you agree? Yeah. Number seventeen. Number 17. Um, you could have ended up with any of these. Yep. If that had ended up face down instead of face up, it would have been completely different. But mm -hmm. we ended up with seventeen, and we mixed these cards up. And I told you to let me know when you were happy with them being mixed. And yep. you said at this point right now. You yeah? showed off. You shuffling. Yeah. That's what I do. Um, you take the cards. And what I want you to do is deal, and you said, I said that you're going to have to do it now. Now, the odds of, the, remember, you had a free choice of sweet, and you ended yeah. up with Smarties. The, 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 every single one of those is different. Yeah. The chance of Smarties being in the 17th position, that's just not likely. No, that's not going to happen. Not going to happen, is it? Deal 16 cards face up. One, Let's have a look. One, two, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Stop. That's 16. Put the 17th there for a minute. If it was 16, it would have been Curly Whirly. 18th would have been Mini Eggs. 19th would have been Twix. 20th would have been Mars Bars. You can look through all of these if you yeah. want to. They are all different. But you ended up with 17. And you freely pick Smartis. Mm -hmm. And this card here in the 17th position is Smartis. <laughs> It's all you. You can examine everything. It's all examinable. I'm magic and I don't even know it. Exactly. You are magic <laughs> and you don't even know it. So there you go. That's uh, another Katie test. Yeah, go on, give it a rating, Katie. It's not really a Katie test, but it's a, uh, it's a performance. We'll give it a 96 because it's better than 95. So in other words, the trick that I spent 10 minutes creating <laughs> is better than cube 52. Go away, Katie. Okay, so it, it was worth the 45 minutes that it took me to write on sweets <laughs> and write on playing cards, and it was I think it was worth it. Katie loved that. Like, yeah, she really did. She gave it more than Cube 52. <laughs> what the hell's going on there? What What do you think's the best version? The one we showed Jack or the one that we showed Katie? What do you prefer? I prefer the second one. Yeah, the only negative with it is it's not as clean a force because with the first one, I can have them touch one. But I, I, I mean, I kind of did a riffle force, but there are ways to make that force cleaner. Like I could have done a cross cut force, for example, or I could have done a timing force, or uh, there's a few different ways that I could have actually done that. And I could actually, I ended up not going for a, I didn't do a corner short, I didn't do a short card, I ended up just doing a crimp. Um, so I could have actually, there's a few different ways that I could have actually gone with it to make the force a bit cleaner. But that's the only negative. I do think it feels more impossible. And I think it's a better use of the sweets. I think having the numbers on the Skittles gives it more of a reason for the Skittles to be in play. Yeah, for sure. I think. 
Um, and it's a really nice force of the number as well. It's interesting, the one that we showed Jack, it was a free choice of number, but the deck was gimmicked to allow us to get to that card at that number. Whilst with this, it's a force of a number, but it's a normal deck. But I actually think, even though it's a force of a number, it doesn't feel like it's a force. Because you've got 52, and they can see that all of that, and the switch just happens so easily at the end. So, just pass me that bowl, just for anybody who wants to make that version up. All I did is I just wrote 1 to 52 on the candies, like I said I was going to. 17... Um, is here, and I just had this in finger palm throughout, or I, I stole it halfway through the performance. <coughs> so at the end, when they've got the face down ones, I just put that over there. I took this and I just did a bobo switch as I put it in front of Katie. And as I said, you could have picked any one of these. I just dumped the 17 into there. So now she's got an examinable uh, candy. And obviously all of these are examinable, except for the number 17, which isn't a problem. And then all I did here, is I just made sure that the 17th card um, was corner shorted. So where's that? I made sure, there it is. I just made sure that the 17th card, Curly Whirly, is not corner shorted, but I've just literally done a little crimp there, which nobody will see. But it meant that because Skittles is next to it, or it was before I messed around with it, um, I could very easily just lift up there and get the break and four Skittles. And, and then go into it. So there you go. That's another um, creative process. I want to know what you think's better. We kind of came up with three methods. There's the test tube method. Well, four. There's the test tube method with the cards with the numbers written on them. There's the test tube method with the with the the, magnets. the magnetic <laughs> double sided <laughs> um, um, uh, whatever they're called smart is uh, with the test tube. That's kind of an interesting idea. There's using a roughed deck. Um, to have the card appear at the number, and then there's uh, there's this version. I think this version's better. I also think out of the three weeks, out of the nuts and bolts trick, the banana trick and this, I actually think this is probably the best trick. So far, yeah, I yeah, think so. I think this is probably the best one. It's kind of really... And it just shows the creative process. You know, I mean, who would have thought of doing an ACAN with Smarties? <laughs> it's just not something that you would think of, right? But when you actually put your thinking cap on, you can come up with a really freaking cool trick. And I like that. It's really cool. So I want you to do me two things down below. What would you have done? Let me know in the comments. What would you have done? If you'd have had this, what would you have done? Would you have gone down the same route as me or something else? Secondly, what's your favorite version? Let me know down below. Was your favorite version, you know, the test tube thing? Or was it the final thing? Let me know. And if you've got any other things that you want to add to Michael's bowls, please put that in the comments down below. And Michael will add that to the bowls as well. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see more of my tricks that I create and you want to learn them, go join the Net Tricks, www.thenettricks.com. I think we're up to about 500 tricks now and they're all absolutely amazing. Anyway, I will see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.